In this lecture, we will discuss the structure of electrical double layer or EDL. So we have seen in uh, previous lectures uh, that how uh, uh, if a surface of a dielectric or for example a glass uh, surface is kept in an electrolyte solution then it acquires a negative charge on the surface so in general a surface in presence of uh, an electrolyte solution in contact with an electrolyte solution will acquire a charge and glass acquires a negative charge and we saw that this was because the silanol groups SI OH groups ionize and, and these groups denote uh, donate a proton and they uh, acquire a negative charge because now we have SiO negative on the surface on the glass surface and because the surface is charged it attracts and rep uh, repels the ions uh, the ions in the electrolyte solution to form an electrical uh, double layer near the surface and this is the typical structure of an electrical uh, double layer so uh, here we have a surface uh, and for example we'll consider glass which is negatively charged and these negative charges on the glass surface are immobile they cannot move now due to the presence of these negative ions the uh, positive and negative ions uh, uh, in the electrolyte solution they uh, experience a force so the positive ions they experience an attractive force and therefore there are more number of positive ions near this negatively charged surface whereas the negative ions in the electrolyte solution they are repelled and therefore there are lesser number of negative ions near this surface now uh, strictly uh, speaking uh, close to this negatively charged surface there is a layer of counter ions so in this case we have uh, positive ions are the counter ions and the first layer consists of immobile charges uh, that are bound to the surface and this uh, layer is called the stern layer and uh, uh, outside this stern layer we have a, a diffusive layer where, where we have more number of positive ions close to the surface and less number of uh, negative ions so uh, what we are going to do now is that we need to uh, we'll uh, solve for the structure of this diffusive layer outside the stern uh, layer and uh, because of uh, this uh, charge accumulation near the wall there is a potential difference that is created between the bulk solution and uh, near the wall so the potential if we take the potential in the bulk solution as zero the potential just uh, next to the stern layer is and denoted by zeta and that is termed zeta potential so uh, we'll uh, solve for the potential distribution across this uh, electrical double layer and also uh, we'll solve for the distribution of the concentration of positive and negative ions now if uh, we have this uh, let's say solution hypothetically at zero absolute uh, zero temperature so at zero kelvin then there would be no uh, uh, thermal motion or due to uh, no brownian motion and there, in that case what we'll have is that uh, near the surface we'll just have the positive ions that would shield these negative ions uh, immobile negative ions at the surface but uh, 
and that is not the case in uh, practical situations and therefore we have uh, molecular diffusion of these negative ions. So this diffusive structure is created uh, by the competition of the, uh, the uh, thermal motion or the random and diffusive motion of these ions and the attractive forces due to attractive or repulsive forces due to the negative charge on the glass surface. Now to obtain the distribution of ions in this diffuse layer so we'll take uh, this location just next to the uh, stern layer as z equals to zero so this is z equals to zero and we'll consider a surface in an infinite uh, media so we have uh, the uh, domain going from z equals to zero to z tending to infinity and we assume that the surface is uh, extends from uh, minus infinity to uh, infinity in both x and uh, y direction so in horizontal directions we have an infinitely large plate now to obtain the distribution of ions in this diffuse layer we'll consider the example of a binary electrolyte So this uh, binary electrolyte has a positively charged species and negatively charged species. The positively charged species has a valence Z and the negatively charged species has valence minus Z. So there we have actually a symmetric uh, binary uh, electrolyte. Now, uh, to, we have seen that the concentration of the ions is governed by the Nernst-Planck uh, uh, equations and for a binary electrolyte we have del C by del T plus the advective flux term and then we have the electromigration term and finally we have the diffusive term. Now uh, for our system where we have uh, this surface uh, in a stationary uh, electrolyte uh, media uh, first we have the transient term is zero we also have that there is no flow of the electrolyte so the advective term is zero so we can simplify our equation to del dot mu c times electric field minus d times gradient c equals to zero and these are two equations one for the positively charged species or the cation and other for the uh, anion so the negative subscript corresponds to the negatively charged species now we have only one dimensional problem because there is variation in the concentration only along the z direction so we can replace this uh, divergence by d by dz so the equation becomes mu plus minus c and electric field is actually uh, given by so we are looking at the z component of electric field is given by d phi by dz so where phi is the potential and we have minus the diffusive flux So this is the equation for uh, the concentration and now we can integrate uh, this uh, equation. 
So if we do the integration, uh, we'll see that uh, we obtain mu c d phi by dz and sorry this was d by dz so we have plus d plus minus d c by dz okay and there would be an integration constant but that integration constant is zero and that's because as z tends to infinity we must have d phi by dz should tend to zero and similarly dc by dz for both positive and negative ions should tend to zero that means uh, far from this uh, surface the variation in the concentration and potential should die down now uh, we can further simplify this equation by invoking a relation between mobility and diffusivity so just like uh, we had seen that the diffusivity of a particle is given by kt over 6 pi eta times the radius and this is what we call as the Stokes Einstein relation similarly this was for uncharged particles similarly for charged particles we have a relation called the Nernst Einstein relation between the mobility and the diffusivity. So the diffusivity is related with mobility as d equals to mu times kt where k is the Boltzmann constant over the valence times charge on a, a charge on an electron. So d is equal to mu kt over z e and this holds for both positive and negative ions. Now if you use this uh, relation in this uh, equation and that means if we can if we uh, divide this equation throughout by the diffusivity and use this particular relation we can simplify uh, this uh, equation to z plus minus e over kt c plus minus d phi by dz plus dc by dz and that's what both plus and uh, positive and negative ions so this is the equation that we get for the concentration and the potential now uh, if we solve this equation uh, we will get the distribution the concentration distribution so to solve this equation we'll uh, divide throughout by c uh, plus minus and we'll note that now this term is actually the logarithm d by dz of the log of concentration so actually uh, the equation simplifies to So this is the uh, final equation which we will solve and this equation has been obtained from the Nernst uh, Planck equation and using the Nernst Einstein relation. Now uh, even without actually using uh, 
and these equations we would have been able to derive this particular equation from only thermodynamic concentra concentrations and uh, to do that we would have uh, what we could have done is that we would have uh, we should have uh, noted that at equilibrium we should have no gradient in the chemical potential and the chemical potential would is uh, given by mu naught plus kt log c times the the uh, extra term due to and the charge on these ions and the uh, potential so if we say that the uh, there's no gradient in chemical potential and we set d by dz of the chemical potential e to zero we would again get this same equation now we can solve this uh, equation noting that at z tending to infinity um, we have that uh, the concentration of positive and negative ions tends to the concentration of the bulk solution that means as uh, we go further from this uh, negatively charged surface the effect of this uh, negatively charged surface is not felt and the electrical double layer screens all the charge and therefore the concentration of the positive and negative ions in the far field is equal to the concentration in the bulk solution also the potential is equal to zero as z tends to infinity now if we solve this equation this is uh, what we'll get so we get c for both positive and negative ions is equal to c naught times exponential of z plus minus e so uh, minus z plus minus e phi over kt and recall that we have taken a binary electrolyte with z plus is equal to minus z minus is equal to z so we can write this as c naught times exponential minus z e phi over kt so this is the distribution of positive and negative uh, ions in the uh, solution and actually this is the Boltzmann distribution so note that uh, because we have negative charges or at uh, the surface the potential phi is actually negative and therefore um, the argument of this uh, exponential uh, for positive ions is minus z e phi and phi is negative so this whole quantity is positive so that means there are more number of positive ions uh, near the surface and similarly for negative charges because phi is negative we have a positive sign uh, over here and therefore there are uh, this uh, we have exponential of a negative quantity because phi is negative and therefore there are lesser number of negative ions near the surface now <coughs> having obtained uh, the distribution of uh, the positive and negative uh, ions in terms of the potential now to obtain the complete uh, distribution with uh, of concentration with space uh, we need to solve for the potential that is phi now to solve for the potential we'll use the 
Poisson equation and for our system it simplifies to del squared phi over del z squared is equal to the negative of free charge over the permittivity and we call that this equation holds for a linear dielectric uh, without any gradient in the dielectric permittivity and this is given by z times f times c plus minus c minus over epsilon and uh, we have multiplied uh, and we have this factor f which is the Faraday's constant over here because the concentrations are in mole per meter cube and we need to convert it into the uh, number density so we multiply it with the Avogadro number and for the charge we have E so E times Na is actually the Faraday's constant f now we can substitute the distribution of concentration in this equation and we get z f over epsilon so we will get exponential z e phi over k t minus exponential minus z e phi over k t and this is equal to and times concentration C naught so we have 2 Z F C naught over epsilon times sine hyperbolic Z E phi over K T so this is the equation that can be solved to obtain the distribution for potential so the boundary conditions are phi at z equals to zero that is just outside the stern layer is given by the zeta potential and phi as z tends to infinity is equal to zero now this equation can actually be solved analytically and we'll solve this uh, later, but we'll first uh, to understand the physics. It's simple uh, easier to actually look at a simple case for small zeta potentials and in that case this equation can be actually uh, linearized. So we'll assume that Z e zeta over kt is uh, really small that means zeta is significantly smaller than kt over z e so actually kt over e so if we take z equals to 1 so kt over e is about 25.7 millivolts at 25 degree celsius so we assume that the zeta potential is really small uh, than 25.7 millivolts if z is equal to 1. In other words, uh, what this uh, assumption says is that the electrical energy is really small compared with the thermal energy. So kT corresponds to the thermal energy and this approximation is called the Debye-Huckel approximation. Okay, so in this uh, approximation, uh, this uh, equation d squared phi d z squared is equal to z c naught z f over epsilon. So exponential will actually, and this will simplify to 1 plus z e phi over kt and this term would simplify uh, would uh, we can approximate to 1 minus z e 
phi over kt. So we'll actually have 2 times z e phi over kt. In other words, uh, we'll have uh, 2 times, so we'll uh, say that f is e times the Avogadro number, so we'll have 2 times z e whole squared times the Avogadro number times concentration C naught over epsilon kT times the potential phi. So uh, now we'll introduce a length scale and that is the characteristic, uh, we'll see that that's the characteristic length scale of the double layer. So if you look at this factor over here, this has units of uh, 1 over the squared of uh, the length. So we'll define a characteristic length scale lambda d which is equal to epsilon kt over 2 z e whole squared times the concentration times the Avogadro number. So if we introduce this length scale, the equation for the potential simplifies to or it can be written in a uh, simplified form as del squared phi over del z squared is equal to phi over lambda d squared. So this has units of length. Now, uh, if we solve this uh, equation, then uh, we'll get a solution of the form phi is equal to zeta times e to power minus z over lambda d. And this form of potential satisfies the boundary condition at z equals to 0, where we have phi equals to the zeta potential, and at z tends to infinity, we have phi tending to 0. Note that this uh, solution is valid only in the debye huckel approximation, that is when z e zeta over k t is uh, significantly smaller than 1. So once we have uh, the potential phi, we can now dis uh, substitute this value into this Boltzmann distribution for the concentration to obtain the distribution of uh, ion concentration. So we have C for plus and uh, minus uh, neg positive and negative ions is actually we have exponential minus plus z e phi over kt but because we have assumed that the uh, potential is significantly smaller than kt over z e we can approximate this as c naught times 1 uh, and we have minus plus z e phi over kt where phi is given by this relation. Now again keep in mind that this value of zeta is negative when the surface charge is negative and therefore we have more number of positive ions at z equals to zero uh, that is near the surface. So for a case like and this, or we can actually look in this direction, we have, if we plot the potential phi versus z at z equals to 0, we have zeta and this value is negative if we have negative charge and the potential decays. Uh, exponentially as z tends to infinity and for concentrations if we plot concentration versus z for both positive and negative 
ions. Far from the surface, we have a concentration C0, but close to the surface, uh, we have high concentration of positive ions if we have negatively charged surface and we have uh, let's say this concentration and it decays again exponentially as you move away from the surface and similarly you have this concentration for negative ions which uh, increases as you move away from the surface and that's because the concentration is uh, given by 1 uh, minus plus Z e phi over K t where phi is an uh, exponentially decaying function. Now we have seen that uh, because phi decays over length scale lambda t so the characteristic scale length scale of the electrical double layer or what we call as the Debye length is given by the value lambda d and recall that lambda d is equal to 1 over epsilon uh, square root of epsilon kt over 2 times z e squared times concentration times the Avogadro number where epsilon is the dielectric permittivity of the liquid so in our case that would be 80 epsilon would be 80 times the permittivity of free space because 80 is the relative uh, permittivity of water k is the Boltzmann constant and e is charge on an electron so e is 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 coulombs T is the temperature, so we will take T equals to 298 uh, Kelvin and K is the Boltzmann constant that is 1.38 into 10 to power minus 23 in SI units and that is meter squared kg second inverse uh, Kelvin inverse. So if we substitute uh, these values uh, and if we take epsilon naught to be 8.854 into 10 to power minus 12 farad per meter what we would, we would get is that lambda e is given by 0.0 so if we take concentrations in millimolar uh, or millimolar means if we take concentrations in mole per meter cube which is same as millimolars then lambda d is given by this factor times 9.7 nanometers that means for z equals to 1 and a concentration of 1 millimolar which is relatively low concentration the thickness of the electrical double layer is order 10 nanometers that's really small and if we have even higher concentration with increasing concentration the thickness of the double layer would be even smaller so uh, it's uh, uh, reasonable to assume that for all microfluidic uh, applications the double layer thickness is of the order of 10 nanometers or smaller and it is significantly smaller than the channel dimensions which are on the order of a few microns at least uh, 1 to 10 uh, micrometers.